Here we go guys, so we are here with the fourth installment of our WrestleMania review series, a four hour extravaganza, but was it actually good? Um, this WrestleMania to me, as a big Macho Man Randy Savage fan, it's very sentimental because of Macho Man winning, but this show had 16 matches on a four hour card, and it was... At times, it was a drag. See, a lot of these older WrestleManias, it's kind of a drag to go back and watch. Three was good. Four was not nearly as good. But, you know, it, it was focusing on the 14-man tournament. The title had been vacated at main event because of a controversial call. Uh, pinfall, one, two, three, when Hogan got his shoulders up. So Hogan was the obvious favorite to win here. And he would end up not winning. It would be Macho Man. Oh yeah, dig it. But um, anyway, so let's get into the show. Um, the opening match of the night was actually a battle royal, and it was won by Bad News Brown. Typical WrestleMania battle royal. You know how they do the battle royals. The guys that are really not on the show, especially the last couple of years with the Andre the Giant Memorial battle royals. The guys that are not on the show really just get a chance to go out and shine and do whatever it is that they're supposed to do. Uh, bad news won this. Uh, nothing really of note, like I said there. Nothing to really ride home about. Uh, it was what it was, you know. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the non-matches first, and I'm going to get into the tournament uh, matches. Uh... Ultimate Warrior made his debut on the show. He defeated Hercules Hernandez. I gave that match about three and a quarter of a star. Um, Brutus the Barber Beefcake defeated the Intercontinental Champion Honky Tonk Man by DQ. That got a star to have. A bunch of shenanigans going on. Um, then we have the Highlanders and Bobby the Brain Heenan defeated the British Bulldogs and Coco Beware. That gets a star in three quarters. Uh, and then Demolition defeated Strike Force, Rick the Martyr Martel and Tito Santana for the tag titles. That gets a star and a quarter to win the titles. If you want me to go more into detail with those, I will. But I wanted to talk about the matches that were in the tournament. Um, Hacksaw Jim Duggan had won the Rumble in 1988, which was the first one ever. Uh, but back then it was just something you won. Like, there was nothing really about the main event. reason I bring that up is him and Ted DiBiase were in the first round match for the tournament. And I think I gave this match... I mean, look. I gave this match a star and a quarter. Yeah, I gave it 1.25 out of 5 stars. Um, The finish wasn't great. They got the story over with DiBiase being a threat because he had Andre in his corner. They went under 5 minutes. Uh, finish came when DiBiase drove his knee into Duggan's back. The ref saw Andre's punch and did nothing. He should have been looking elsewhere. It was a job of ref, not Joey Morella or one of the Hebner twins. I don't know. So, yeah. DiBiase hit the fist, dropped the win. Uh, Dino Bravo uh, lost to Don Morocco by DQ. Uh, basically, uh, Bravo hit a side slam. That was his finisher. The referee recovered, and instead of counting the pin, he tapped Bravo on the shoulder to let him know he was disqualified because I guess he had decked the ref with a forearm by accident. So Morocco advanced a half a star because it seemed like they were just everywhere and didn't really know what the hell was going on. And it was it was a whole big, big old mess that was going on with them. Um... Bob Euchre was steady throughout the night, too, trying to find Vanna White, which was, he was getting borderline creepy, where it was like, yo, are you gonna, like, ease up a little bit, partner? Like, the hell's going on? Ease up. Um, yeah. Greg the Hammer Valentine beat Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, in which, to me, might be one of my favorite tournament matches of the night. I gave that match, uh, let me look. Three and a half out of five. I do remember I barely, I visibly enjoyed this match. Uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat actually had a son, Richie, down there at ringside. He was holding him as a baby. Richie's now 30-something years old, I think. But it was cool to see. 
uh, nevertheless. Uh, little little dragon, he was a couple months old. He is now Richie Steamboat, which was pretty cool. Uh, these guys put on a phenomenal match. If you're going to go back and watch any non -turn any tournament match that is not the finals, go back and watch this one. I love this match. Steamboat ran Valentine's head in the corner 10 times. Ricky hit the flying cross body, but Hammer rolled through, grabbed the tights, covered one, two, three. That was the finish of the match. This was There was a lot of good near falls. They worked hard and built up to the finish. It's a shame that Steamboat wasn't booked better post-Mania 3, but that's what happens in wrestling sometimes. Um, Randy Savage defeated the natural Butch Reed, uh, half a star, under four minutes. So the quarterfinals, basically Andre and Hogan got a bye to the quarterfinals, which is what happened. You know, they got a bye. It is what it is. There's nothing to really write home about. Um, one man gang won by count out over Bam Bam Bigelow. That gets a dud. Uh, the ref was literally counting with Bigelow on the apron, which I always thought was kind of weird. But, hey, it is what it is. You know, I'm not going to sit and complain about it. Gets dud. Um, Rick Rude and Jake the Snake Roberts, they actually gave him a lot of time. It was 15 minutes, and it went to a 15-minute draw. Uh, Rude thought he won. Uh, sometimes guys will be booked for 15 minutes, and they will go all out with a bunch of near falls. This really wasn't the case here. I did get the match two and a half stars, so it was very enjoyable, but it was like right as it seemed like it dragged on a little bit too long, and right as you were getting into the story, boom. But they also did not make any mention of a 15-minute draw, so when the bell rang, I was like, what? Anyway, and that is what it is. So the quarterfinals of the tournament, uh, you get into that, and it's Hogan against Andre. These guys went to a double DQ, half a star. This match was way worse than their WrestleMania match. Uh, both guys hit each other with a chair. Uh, some of the most awkward-looking chair shots I've ever seen. Um, so, yeah. So the man that would win the next match would get an automatic bye to the finals. And it would be Ted DiBiase defeating The Rock Don Morocco. Um... And just under five, just over five minutes, uh, very basic match. I gave it a star. Morocco had power moves early. DiBiase used his smarts to come back and win. Uh, Morocco would finish him off uh, for a time. DiBiase would use his brains to get the win. I like seeing the stun gun used as the finisher, which was pretty cool. Uh, Quarterfinal round, you had Greg the Hammer Valentine against uh, Randy Macho Man Savage. Savage got the win there over Valentine. I expected better. The finish actually worked. Unlike most of the earlier matches, it was too short for them to really put the match in the, into second gear, though. I gave it a star and a quarter. These guys won about six minutes. Nothing to really write home about. You know, like I said, I mean, all of these matches were either short or you had that very, very long one. And to have 16 matches stretched out over a four-hour show, you know, WrestleMania is four through, I think, Seven or eight would all be four hours, and then they would go to three from about, I think, eight to 15, and then from 16 on, they've been four hours or above. Uh, so the world title tournament looks like this now. You've got uh, Randy Macho Man Savage taking on the one-man gang, and Savage would win by DQ um, just after four minutes. Uh, quarter of a star here. Not really much to really ride home about. Um, it was Savage, so not really much to ride home. Savage would then face DiBiase in the finals, and it would get two and a half stars, and Macho Man Randy Savage would win the, the WWF Championship with a flying elbow in about nine minutes and 20 seconds to beat Ted DiBiase and to win his first ever... Um, championship on the night you know nine and a half almost nine and a half minutes Hogan and um Savage were working together as the mega powers brother but then the mega powers would explode spoiler alert which we'll see at Wrestlemania 5 um but yeah I mean this overall show uh was just below average. I mean, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be nice though because of it being savage, and I'm gonna say it was a five and a half. Although I want to give it about a four or a five. 
a uh, couple five stars of the night. Uh, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Randy Macho Man Savage first. He had four matches, no epic matches like last year, but he was still the best performer. DiBiase worked three. I'm gonna go Hogan. Did a really good job of putting Savage over in the main event. Greg the Hammer Valentine two, and then I'm gonna put Mean Gene Oakland for checking out Vanna White's ass. Yes, you heard what I said. He checked out Vanna White's ass as she walked away. That shit was hilarious to me. But regardless, um, I thought the best match of the night was Greg Valentine and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I thought the worst match of the night was hold on, the one-man gang. And Bam Bam Bigelow. Excuse me, I gave that main event three stars, not three and a half. Uh, I'm a big guy. I'm a big fan of Savage, you know. Um, Savage is one of my all-time favorites. Um, I did tell y'all I would get back into some of those other matches real quick to recap if I had enough time. And I do here real quick. Demolition defeated Strike Force. Uh, what did I say I gave that match? Um, an overbook finish. Demolition got the win in about eight minutes. Um, Tito goes after Fuji. Uh, he gets knocked down instead of helping his uh, partner or whatever. The whole overbook thing, they were using the cane for the finish. I mean, it, it was what it was. You know, uh, it was crazy. Bulldogs and Coco versus the Islanders and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Heenan, pin Coco beware. Yes, Coco beware. The man that is in the Hall of Fame before Owen Hart, before British Bulldog who might be getting in this year, pin, uh, got pinned by Bobby the Brain Heenan. Let that sink in for a minute. Let that sink in. Coco Beware, the Hall of Famer, got pinned by Bobby the Brain Heenan. Who books that crap? I don't know. Trash. Garbage. Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Um... Faced Honky Tonk Man in a very boring match. I thought the match was garbage. I'm not going to sit there and lie to you. Uh, I gave it a star and a half, and that was me being generous. I, I was bored out of my mind. Uh, I didn't even get to see most of it. Whatever. You know, I'm just going to go based off of whatever it was. This match almost was boring. You know, I I didn't really like it. You know, I, I just thought that it was um kind of garbage. But hey, it was what it was. You know, um, hey, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It's a, um, it's okay. You know, the whole show was trash. Absolutely sad that his moment had to be ruined by this. But hey, excuse me. Give me one second. I don't know. I just think that it, especially when it just fell off to me. And five fell off as well. But um, things are going to eventually get better. Um, but as always, hope y'all enjoyed the review. Um, stay motivated. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and, um, just do the best you can with what you got. Um, I love all of you guys. Um, I think that, uh. I'm loving the support I'm getting on the channel. Uh, this WrestleMania, like I said, was uh, not the best. You'll see in a, you'll see in, a, in about a minute or so. I'll have my pros and cons up on the screen of what I really thought about this show, what my absolute thoughts and opinions were on it. Let's just say it wasn't the absolute best. Um, there was a lot of things they did not do right on this show and a lot of things that were good. Um, 
But nevertheless, hope you guys enjoyed the review. As always, love all of y'all. Uh, stay motivated. I'll see y'all at WrestleMania 5. Peace. I'm out.